There are thousands upon thousands of Hindu temples in India. This one is special because in many ways it is emblematic of how polarized the country has become under Prime Minister Narendra Modi and it is at the heart of his re-election efforts. It has been three years since the ground was broken on the Ram Temple here in Ayodhya. But the history of the site is a lot longer and more complicated than those numbers suggest. As India prepares for a national election, the structure on the banks of the river Sarayu shows how Modi's Bharatiya Janta Party has become a seemingly unstoppable electoral machine. And it could help Modi fundamentally change the world's most populous country. Construction here in Ayodhya is non-stop as thousands of workers race to complete the temple. The city in northern India has become one of the most popular Hindu pilgrimage destinations and it has a significance dating back thousands of years. That is when ancient scriptures started citing it as the birthplace of Ram. In Hinduism, Ram is one of the most widely worshipped deities. He is a hero of one of the religion's two epics, the Ramayana. Born a prince of Ayodhya, the tale recounts his exile and then his victory over the forces of evil. He is seen as the embodiment of all that is good, the ideal man. For all those reasons and more, it is a convenient association for the Prime Minister. भगवान राम के आदर्शों पर चलना हम सभी भारतीयों का कर्तव्य है मोदी इज बिकम इंडियाज मोस्ट पावरफुल लीडर इन डेकेड्स बाय पुशिंग हिंदू नेशनलिज्म और हिंदुत्व इट इज अ स्ट्रैंड ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स दैट कॉन्फ्लेक्ट्स हिंदू रिलीजियस आइडेंटिटी एंड पॉलिसी एंड इट सीक्स टू मूव इंडिया अवे फ्रॉम द सेक्युलर पॉलिटिक्स ऑफ इट्स पास्ट इंस्टेड फॉर्जिंग अ नेशन फॉर द मेजॉरिटी Hindu population. Ayodhya has become a controversial focus of Hindu nationalism. For the best part of 500 years, the temple was the site of a mosque, the Babri Masjid. In 1992, thousands of Hindus overwhelmed security forces to demolish the mosque. It was a political earthquake that saw thousands die in the riots that followed the quest to build a new temple galvanized the hindu nationalist movement and helped modi's rise to power in his 2014 election campaign he made a number of promises to crack down on corruption develop the economy introduce the uniform civil code end the autonomy of india's only muslim majority state jammu and kashmir and significantly build the ram temple मोदी जी के मोदी जी हैं तो मुमकिन है क्योंकि मोदी जी की बस की ही बात है और तो हमें तो नहीं लगता क्योंकि हमारी जितनी उम्र निकल गई है 28 साल लगभग हम हम हो गए हैं हमने देखा नहीं है उनके जैसे नेता बट द लास्ट टिकेट इन पावर हैज बीन चैलेंजिंग एट टाइम्स इवन एज इंडियाज इकोनॉमी कंटिन्यूज टू ग्रो एट अ रैपिड रेट दैट ग्रोथ हैज एन बेनिफिटेड एवरीवन यूनिफॉर्मली एंड अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट रिमेंस स्टबर्नली हाई Modi has delivered on some of his more contentious promises scrapping Kashmir's autonomy and now building this temple these are policies that have helped Modi overcome other electoral concerns take the most recent elections in November when key bellwether states including Madhya Pradesh Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh went to the polls Opposition leader Rahul Gandhi and his Indian National Congress party had been hopeful of capitalizing on some of Modi's perceived weaknesses to make inroads. There was a sense before the vote that support among farmers and women, two of the BJP's core constituencies, 
माइट बी वेनिंग जिन जिन मुद्दों पे मोदी जी आए थे उन भ्रष्टाचार हो महंगाई हो रोजगार हो वो आज तक कोई भी मतलब उन्होंने जो वादे किए अभी तक पूरे नहीं करे नीतू पटेल इज अ फॉर्मर स्कूल टीचर हु इज नाउ अ होम मेकर आफ्टर इयर्स वोटिंग फॉर द बीजेपी शी वोटेड फॉर गांधीज इंडियन नेशनल कांग्रेस इन नवंबर सरकार बदलना जरूरी है बदलाव बहुत जरूरी है इनमें घमंड बहुत ज्यादा आ गया है तानाशाही करने लगे हैं इनके नेता पटेल वॉज पर्टिकुलरली वर्ड अबाउट इन्फ्लेशन विच रिमेन हाई इन नवम्बर फॉर अबाउट सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ इंडिया रूरल हाउस होल्ड एग्रीकल्चर इज स्टिल दोल लाइवलीहुड मोदी प्रोमिस टू डबल फार्म इनकम वेन सीकिंग हिस्स सेकेंड टर्म तुलसी राम पाटीदार ओन्स अ लार्ज फार्म अराउंड भोपाल लेकिन हम मजबूरी है क्या कर रहे मजबूरी है ना इवन सो इट इज टेकन टाइम फॉर पाटीदार टू कम अराउंड टू गांधी एंड द कांग्रेस पहले क्या था कि बिल्कुल ही इनको राहुल को ही कुछ नहीं कर पाते थे लेकिन जब से ही इन्होंने अपनी पूरी कन्याकुमारी से और उत्तराखंड तक यात्रा की है वो बाकी में दबदारी से यात्रा की है साहब डिस्पाइट द कंसर्न्स दे वर स्टिल अ हाई टर्न आउट फॉर मोदी मोदी जी के नाम की तो माया पूरे देश में है ये हम सबका सौभाग्य है कि वो भारतीय जनता पार्टी के नेता हैं When the election results landed on December 3rd, the BJP retained power in Madhya Pradesh and wrested control of the state legislature from the Indian National Congress in both Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh. The opposition political parties despite their best efforts have not been able to challenge or question Modi's credibility in the eyes of the people. This is something which Rahul Gandhi never understood that holding a position of power or holding a state office Uh, has a natural tendency of introducing a charisma in you and which has benefited Narendra Modi in building up his profile as concerns about unemployment and corruption persist in some quarters the indian prime minister has taken advantage of rising nationalism which has also taken hold in other parts of the world and the ram temple stands as an example of that prakash sharma is a former leader of the hindu nationalist VHP the organization that convened the rally with the BJP that culminated in the destruction of the Babri Masjid in 1992 inka durbhagya hai ki modi ji ne kabhi apne aap ki hindu identity ko chhipaya nahi re sikhna chahiye unko na unko agar bharat mein agar is desh mein kisi ko rajniti karni hai to hindu ki upeksha karke wo rajniti nahi kar payega ye baki rajnitik dalon ko samajhna chahiye that modi represents the interest of all hindus is of course hotly contested by his opponents not least rahul gandhi there is nothing hindu about what the bjp does they are not hindu nationalists they are nothing to do with hinduism since we are in a transition period from the old fashioned secular politics to a majoritarian politics there are a lot of people who are sympathizers and supporters of the old ways they are very disturbed by this politics of polarization they think that that something fundamentally disruptive is being unleashed by the present regime the temple won't be completed for a few years and yet modi is opening it in january 2024 just months before a general election an electoral victory might let his government pursue an agenda that could include more temples on disputed sites a national register of citizens and a law that makes it harder for muslims to demonstrate that they are indian citizens steps that could cement india's move away from the secular politics of its past